Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, this is Tony Day, and today I wanted to continue the discussion about ISO and dynamic range in relation to the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Make sure that if you haven't already, please see my previous video that talked about ISO and shooting raw between 100 and 1000 ISO so you can get a grasp on everything that we're going to talk about because we're going to actually just build on that for um, the high native ISO settings. So here we are looking at the chart and um, remember before that we talked about ISO invariance and that between 100 and 1000 when you shoot raw it's really invariant. There's no there's no um, gain or amplification that's being necessarily baked into the file when you shoot raw between you know these different ISOs, meaning that the dynamic range really doesn't change at all on acquisition when you change the ISO setting. All that you're really doing is telling the metadata to adjust the curve in your software um, based on whatever this is saying, okay? remember we talked about there was a jump here that there was something physically changing with the camera or with the sensor that would be making this kind of change so it no longer is ISO invariant between these two values you can't go from 1000 to 1250 when we go into DaVinci Resolve and we look at our previous test we can see that we get blocked after 1000 you can't go higher than 1000 so that tells us that you know the the sensor is just no longer ISO invariant when you make the jump from 1000 to 1250 not between those values okay so the dual native ISO sensor is basically doing something different between these I'm sure there's other documentation about the dual native ISO sensors and how they operate I'm not really going to talk about that for this video so with everything that we knew from last time, seeing how the ceiling and the floor are the same as you go through ISO 1250 to 6400, you can see that it's very similar in how it behaves. And you can also see it similar in how it behaves when we look at middle gray. It's, it, it still has this kind of middle gray shifting up and down as we move through the range. Now, the reason why I'm saying that we're concentrating on 1250 to 6400 is because there's a pretty obvious difference between 6400 and 8000. When we look here, 12.3 moves to 12.1 and it decreases in the total amount of dynamic range as we go over 6400. We can also see that we get this kind of staircase thing going on. So this tells me that there is something going on in camera that will bake this change into your file okay and it also tells me and i'm just guessing that when we shoot in 8000 12800 or 25600 anywhere in here that we're not going to be able to go backwards because it will be doing something different with the file um, I'm not sure if that's happening at the sensor level or if it's just being, you know, amplified in camera and then baked into the image file. I'm not sure. I'm not the engineer. I didn't design the camera. But for understanding of the practicality of it, it, it tells me that if I shoot at 8000, I can't go backwards. Okay. And I'll be baking this into whatever this curve is into my file. Okay. So. Let's first experiment with 1250 to 6400 and see if the results are the same as when we experimented with shooting between 100 and 1000 ISO. The experiment basically is shooting in RAW, we're going to be shooting uncompressed, and the only thing we're going to be changing in the acquisition of the file is the ISO levels. And if this is truly ISO invariant within this range of 1250 to 6400. What we should see is that if we say took our shot from 1250 and set it to 3200 and 6400 and set it to 3200, the shot should look exactly the same. And the same thing should be true if we took 3200 and 6400 and set it to 1250 or 1250 and 3200 and set it to 6400, the file should look exactly the same, right? So let's see what happens. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and I have a shot that was acquired in 1250 ISO, then 3200, and 6400. As we can see when we click through here, 1250, 3200, and 6400, there's no change in the picture, 
And when we look at our scopes, you'll see that there's no change. The dynamic range is exactly the same. Now you might notice a slight up and down little twitch. The reason why you're seeing that is because the noise actually is slightly different between them. And it's because the uh, noise patterns are randomized. So, I mean, if even if we were in the same file to arrow forward and backward, you'll see that there's slight, slight changes. And really that's the only difference that we're seeing is that, you know, from frame to frame, there's a slight difference in the noise. You know, it doesn't mean that either of them are noisier than the other. All it means is that the noise are in basically different spots. So, you know, even here, if we zoom in, I don't know how obvious this will be on YouTube, but you know, we're looking at this noisy area at 412%. There's no difference in the noise, it's just the pattern slightly changes in between. Just to make sure that you know I'm not lying to you um, or I'm doing anything underhanded or incorrect, we'll just reset everything back to where it's supposed to be. And as you can see, we've got one set at 1250, one set at 3200, and the other at 6400. So just to check again, you know, going to 3200, you can see that it looks the same. Okay, we're back where we were. Now, if I change it to, let's say I go to 6400 from 1250, we set them all to 6400, we should also see the same thing. We should see similar um, results in our scopes and the picture should look the same. And as we go back and forth, you can see that it looks exactly the same. So let's also look at highlight recovery, just to get an idea of if there's anything more or less recoverable as far as highlights. Now in this one, you can see that there's uh, hats on these, so it's a little bit clipped, but um, let's hit highlight recovery. You can see that it kind of rolls out on each of them. And if we go back and forth, you can see that the top looks exactly the same. So there's no difference in the highlights when you shoot in 1250, 3200, or 6400. Again, reaffirming that the Sensor is indeed ISO invariant between 1250 and 6400. So now let's look at a few shots where I intentionally blew the highlights more than in the previous shots, just so we can see if there would truly be any more recoverable data in if we were to acquire in 1250, 3200, or 6400 ISO. Um, so here's, we've got 1250, 3200, and 6400, okay? So let's set them all to 3200. So they look exactly the same. And now we hit highlight recovery on all of them. And we can see that the highlights are the same, that the highlights are no more recoverable in 6400 than 3200 than 1250. So as long as you keep everything else the same and all you do is change the ISO when you shoot, there is no difference in the highlight recovery that you'll be able to perform. Now let's look at this area, 8,000 to 25,600. Now this is where I said previously that this should be different. We should not be able to go backwards and there should be baked in differences in the dynamic range. Now let's see if that's true. So here we are in Resolve with a shot at 8,000, 12,800 and 25,600. Now these shots are all shot with the same exposure settings as far as uh, shutter speed and the aperture as the previous three shots that we had. So if you remember before, we said that basically if you can go up and down between ISO ranges, it means that the only thing that you'd be changing by shooting at a certain ISO level would be the metadata, right? The instructions for the software. So if that was the case at 8,000, then we should be able to change this 6400 shot to 8,000, right? Well, we can't. It, it doesn't have the option to go to 8,000 in here. And if we go to 8,000 and we try to go backwards, you see we're, we're stuck at 8,000, you see? So this to me is suggesting that um, there is some change in the raw file actually, that there is information that is being changed from 6400 to 8000 and we do indeed have a dynamic range that is smaller than what we had at 6400 which it would be correct according to the chart if we look at the scopes 
you can see that the top is kind of squeezing down. So we're losing, we're losing some information here, right? We're losing a little bit of dynamic range in the highlights, which makes sense if we look back at the chart, you see that there is a loss in the headroom, see? So the clipping point for highlights should be lower. And if we click on highlight recovery, 6400 and on 8000, you can see that the these look similar on the tops, but they're not exactly the same, okay? So it, even though it's, I mean, we could try to change the exposure and, and change curves, and there probably wouldn't be, if you messed around a bit, too much of a difference as far as dynamic range in between these. You could probably get them to look very similar, but the more in, interesting thing is when you look at the extreme, you'll see how prevalent the baked in difference is with the file. So. Here we are at 8,000. Now let's go to the next one and click on Highlight Recovery. And then we'll go to the next one that's gonna be at 25,600 and hit Highlight Recovery. And if you look in the scopes, you can see that the tops are getting shorter and shorter as we go up. So we've got 8,000. You can see it has some room in there. We go to 12,800. You can see that the clip is much further down. And when we go to 25,600, you can see that there's a huge difference between it and 8,000, you see? Now again, you can change the contrast to get them to look close. I'm not really gonna spend my time doing that, but this, to me, is telling me that there is a loss in dynamic range as you shoot raw in these higher ISOs from 8,000 and up. Um, and again, just like in 8,000, where we were stuck at 8,000 in the ISO setting down here, the same thing is true with 12,800 and 25,600, okay? So that's how I am reading this whole thing, okay? You have ISO invariance in the low gain setting from 100 to 1,000, and you have ISO invariance between 1250 and 6,400, and then once you start getting into 8,000 and higher, you're actually baking this curve or you're changing the actual dynamic range of the raw file from 8,000 to 25,600. It, it starts to just decrease and decrease and decrease. So I would classify if I was trying to, you know, put out three zones on this, you've got your low native ISO, your high native ISO, and then you've got your extended ISO. This I would say is emergency kind of situations. And with that, I hope that you have enjoyed this. Um, I hope that you kind of understand a little bit more about what's going on. And if you do have any questions, please uh, comment below and I'll try to help you out.